Robert yes. Ducky, you're the one. I don't know if she's ever seen uh, you that yet. I'm so much fun. Lots, of, lots fun. of fun. Lots of fun. Oh, sorry. Hey everybody, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. It's episode 467 being recorded on September the 13th, 2017. I'm Ryan Schrout. I'm Jeremy Holstrom. I'm Josh Walbreth. And I'm Alan Malbentano. It's always this, there's this huge difference. We go from Josh, especially when he's in a good mood like he is tonight. He has some, some dramatic His hair is animation. blowing in the wind. Yeah, he's very excited yeah, about it. His hair is blowing in the wind. Al, Alan's, Alan's self-pronunciation, like self uh, uh, introduction couldn't be l- any more tame. I feel no, like. no, no, somebody's no. got to bring you guys back down. To Earth. No, no, no. Um, we should we should do I'm, a syllable Brian, count every week. I'm Brian Ralvin. What is Brian it? Maltavino. <laughs> Maltavino. Brian Maltavino. <laughs> Maltavino. <laughs> As the commenter on our website would uh, suggest. Welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, we talk about PC hardware and other stuff that goes on as well. Um, we have a timer on screen, but they don't see the timer, right? That's only I hope, us. I hope not. Yeah, That'd I be really boring. Streams. Yeah, we have we have multiple streams going in and out with multiple things on them now. Whoa! Yeah, it's this crazy. Is messed up. This is messed up. Um, you know, earlier before the show started, I said I was going to talk about uh, a dream I had, and I don't think it's really appropriate anymore. Just thinking about it more and more as I went. You know, here's where it was. Josh, you'll appreciate this. Oh God! You're an old. Okay, guy. I probably you're, you're an old guy, right? You're starting to worry about you're things. An old guy? You're, yes, I'm a urinal this is act, guy. That's actually. M- more apt than you might know. You're making this point. Um, you know, you wake up. Is it, a, is it t- a dirty Texaco gas station restroom? <laughs> no. How many times do you wake up at night to have to go to the bathroom, Josh? None. Okay, not yet. But that's the assumption that we oh, will. Oh, one on a good night. Shit, I wake up in the middle of the night now, to go I to the bathroom. Now, I have a dog that has to go to the bathroom every four hours, so. So, okay, here, here's how it was. I, uh, here, the punchline to, to the dream was I woke up and was proud that I had not peed in my bed. Because literally, I dreamed multiple times that I was trying to find a bathroom and I would go to the bathroom, but I still had the urge to go to the bathroom. And I said, what is wrong with me? I need to go to the bathroom again. I would go find another bathroom and I would, in the dream, I would pee and then I would leave, right? Is this the same dream you said I was in somewhere? Yeah, I forget where you come into it. But, but the, the best, the best the part urinal, about it, obviously. The, the event, I was, I was trying to attend this event and I kept having to go back out and go to the bathroom, right? <laughs> and I was mad. And it was a, it was a comedy troupe show led by Tiger Woods. What? I have no idea what's happening. Uh, and also, I went into one of the stalls to use the restroom, and floating in the toilet was a nice SLR camera in the toilet. Clean water, all that stuff, just sitting there. And I went, I don't need that camera that bad. And I went to the next stall over and did it. It was a really, and I, it was one of the very rare wow. instances where I personally wake up and remember a dream. Like, I woke up, it was like, that I woke was, up and I went, this week on dreaming. Okay, two things about that. Yeah. One, Kelly is also very happy that you did not be that. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. And two, those dreams are so incredibly common, it's not even funny. At least five times a year for me, I wake up and it's like, you check. Yeah. Oh, like, thank I God. Woke up I, and I, was like, yeah, I was dreaming I had to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And, I, and it was as soon as I woke up and I realized I had to go to the bathroom really bad, I was like, oh, that was my body, like, Trying to get me to pee the bed? Like, I don't understand what hey, the hell hey, no, is. Like, you have hey, to dude, pee. Wake like, up. You have to up. pee. Wake up. That's not, but. You're all dangling it, it, SL, our camera in front of you just to wake you up. Yeah, like, uh, I was trying to think nah, of something. Nah, Tiger Woods wouldn't be in a comedy troupe. Idiot. Wake up. Yeah, I don't, I don't know not? what's going on. Uh, anyway, we're not going to. go to that comedy show, though. I, I would, right? A comedy <laughs> troupe led by Tiger Woods. I've, you, yeah, there was, maybe you were just attending the same show or something. I don't remember. Yes, because I'm all about the Tiger Woods comedy show. Well, comedy it, I mean, oh, wait. It's that, a dream. That's Tiger Woods' problem. He always did yes and, like he was doing improv, but he applied uh, it to real mm-hmm, life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the problem. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so anyway, welcome to the show, everybody. We do record it on, on Wednesday nights, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific at pcper.com slash live. You can go to pcper.com slash subscribe. Uh, which signs you up for a really simple, basic email notifications list that looks like this, um, asks for your name and your email address. All I do is send you notifications a couple of hours ahead of the live stream so that you can uh, you can catch on to that. We also still have our Patreon campaign running. That is at patreon.com slash PCPer. It is your ability to contribute to the site on kind of a, not kind of, but a recurring monthly basis. If you worry about me having odd dreams and I might need therapy in the future or something to that degree. I mean, you definitely in the need future. therapy. Okay, fair. <laughs> fair. Uh, this is your way. Dream, though. 
this is your way to contribute to that. And as is always the case, or most of the time the case, if you become a patron during the live stream, I get an email notification for it, and I will call out your name and thank you. If you increase your patronage during uh, the live stream, I will do the same thing. And we are extremely grateful for everybody who helps us out in that way. It's extremely helpful and um, uh, uh, flattering humbling that people do that uh and let's see we also had i uh, wanted to point out we do have another mailbag for you up this week episode eight um that's that's my face talking to you man i guess my hair is a little a little jacked up on that i got my cool quake time quake con t-shirt on nobody in the office for this one so you don't see any random wanderings behind me and no super secret stuff we all cleared uh, out being going on yeah everybody nobody wanted to be there to listen to me ramble for 20 minutes but apparently people on the internet do so that uh that video is there and we answer some questions and if you want to get your question answered you can leave a comment on that youtube video that youtube if you're listening to this in some other capacity audio or on the website uh it's just youtube.com slash pc per and uh, you can see those videos, subscribe, leave your own questions. It's kind of a neat little uh, additional way to, to, to interact with us, if you will. All right, before we get to our first uh, story, I think we have, we have two new patrons. Uh, the first one was Adam Curtis, brand new con uh, contributor pledging $1 to us. Thank you very much, Adam, for that. And then uh, for a pledge of $5.99, we have The Clap. Five ninety nine. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. That's, you know what? Here's the, the that's the best thing about getting the clap is getting the clap. After that, it's all downhill. Mm. It's true. It's true. But if you're getting five ninety nine from the clap on a monthly recurring basis, that's okay. Oh yeah, it's the gift penicillin. that keeps giving. <laughs> penicillin's relatively cheap, I think. Blue cheese, right? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, thank you guys very much for that. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, let's talk about, uh, first we want to talk about Ken's write-up in our video on NVIDIA Whisper Mo. What? what? I, I, I quiet. Do I have to do this portion of the podcast in no. ASMR? Uh, no. Yes. <laughs> uh, so Whisper Mode is a feature that NVIDIA announced at Computex along with the Max-Q notebooks. Right? Yes, but it's not tied to Max-Q notebooks. Yeah, they just kind of announced it at the same time. Yeah. Uh, Max-Q notebooks were the ones where they wanted to get GTX 1080s, 1070s, 1060s, and thinner, lighter form factors. We've, we've, we've talked about those with the Asus ROG Zephyrus. Ken's still finishing up uh, the review of the MSI GS... 63, 63 VR, VR, right? Stealth Pro 001. Stealth Pro 001. Very good naming schemes for all these machines. Um, Whisper Mode is essentially it's a software upgrade that you. It's just if, as long as you have the latest version of GeForce Experience and the latest driver, um, you can run Whisper Mode. Which uh, if you have a GTX 1060 or higher yes. notebook, yes, it does this. And what what essentially is it that we're looking at? What is what is it doing? Essentially, it's so there is one more requirement. You have to be plugged in to use Whisper Mode. And AC power. Got when it. you're plugged in and have Whisper Mode turned on, it's essentially a frame rate limiter. Okay. So the idea being that if you limit your frame rates to a certain cap, uh, it seemed to be 40 in most games we tested, but I think they have profiles that they're dynamically adjusting for certain games. Right. Where if you're playing a MOBA version FPS, you might want different sort of uh, limits there. And you can adjust it from 30 to your max refresh in increments of five. But we did all our testing at 40 frames per second. And the idea is by limiting it, your frame rate to 40 frames per second in games that get like, let's say, over 100 frames per second, you're using less GPU compute power, which means that the fans have to spin up less, which means your GPU is quieter and also cooler right. in most cases. It, I think it's also probably worth noting that they they do they use the um what do they call it? settings application uh, uh the the capability GFD. for GeForce Experience to set the settings of your game outside of the game right which is still by the way a really cool feature um and they will adjust some of the settings in your game when you enable whisper mode right so they're, yeah. they're trying to basically you know optimize for acceptable you know good image quality but they still want to, like, the whole point of limiting the frame rate is to lower the load on the GPU. So Absolutely. they don't want to increase the image quality settings because, oh, I only want to hit 40 FPS. You want to maintain or lower image quality settings while also limiting your frame rate to 40 FPS. And that's how you get drops in power consumption, temperature, noise, et cetera. So uh, we, we tested it on both that MSI and the ASUS Max-Q machine. Yeah, the right? ROG Zephyrus that reviewed uh, yeah. about a month ago. 
I mean, this this is interesting little synopsis here. So this is Metro Last Light running on uh, the, the Zephyrus. Yeah, no, that's the GS sixty three. GS sixty three VR. Scale. So this is just frame times straight out of FCAT, no fancy graph making here of uh, at, a, at a whatever default settings we have, like medium or or high settings. Yeah, I think it was like ten AP high. F like fairly mid range settings right. for Metro Last Elite, which is an older title. But yeah, still and you can demanding. see like frame times are running in your you know eight to ten millisecond. Yeah, it's running over so. hundred frames per second. Over hundred frames yeah. per second. Meanwhile, you enable Whisper Mode. Ta da! You're now running at what is it twenty three millisecond yeah. frame times or so? And extremely consistent. Aha! Uh -huh. That looks like a pretty frames straight per line second. across the board. Yeah, yeah. which is important. Yeah, because it is. If, if it wasn't good at frame rate limiting, it'd be spiking all over the place and be an awful experience. Sure. So uh, on that MSI GS63 VR, you can see the... So we did, obviously, the, it's called Whisper Mode, so we did sound measurements on yep. this. And you can see the differences of Whisper Mode off versus Whisper Mode on there. Would you consider these good or bad results, Ken? Like what? These are kind of moderate to to very little change in noise well, level. Six yeah, dB I, six dB is like half volume. Yeah, so six dB is half or twice the volume depending yeah. on which direction you're going. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So so that's like meh, almost half. Yeah. So, so well it's not really. I mean you it's see three dB on, on the light, on yeah. the high end in Metro. I will yeah. say during the testing, I didn't really notice a difference right. with with the GS six. Right, and, and, and to be fair, like so, when we do our noise testing, we turn off the AC, we turn off all the other stuff going on, right? So we have a floor, like a noise floor of around like 30, 31. It was thirty five for this one. We was had some more stuff going on in the background, but okay. it was the same throughout. But obviously, once you're above that, that's as long as you're above that floor, then you're you're fine in terms of measurement. But what's not like what I'm saying is we're not really we're not like sitting in a twenty dBA sound chamber trying to do this. So mm -hmm. um, it is going to be uh, in terms of just Ken's experience sitting there listening to it, right? The measurements are the measurements, but um, but the it's obviously going to depend on the platform as well, like the specific system, because the the ROG Zephyrus, which has a, which has a 1080 max Q, and it's all much larger sound level differences. Yeah. So if you think about it, we are testing at the same settings between both machines, so. A 1080 should be more power efficient running the same game at the same settings, same resolution at 40 frames per second than a 1070. It should be able to clock down lower unless you're hitting some sort of bottom limit of to where the GPU doesn't, like some in-between state where the GPU doesn't clock down far right. enough. But we saw a huge difference with the Zephyrus with the max, the 1080 max Q. And a, a lot of that could also be to thermal design of the notebook. Right. Where they could get away with spinning the fans slower because maybe they have more heat pipes, they have more fins, they have right. better sort of thermal management design. Or you could look at this MSI machine and maybe say that it was like at its threshold, even at 40 FPS, yeah. right? So uh, it's kind of an interesting comparison there. And then this is, this is, this is the, this is like one of the net results. So sound quality drops. I'm sorry, sorry sound quality, sound level <laughs> drops when you enable this. Um, and your clock speeds drop. Obviously, that's kind of the whole point. Yeah. Right. So on the RG Zephyrus, you see clock speeds that uncapped. You know, running over 120 frames per second, you're looking at over 1600 megahertz clock speeds. But when you enable Whisper Mode, you're at about 800, just under yeah, 800. Yeah, you're essentially having the frequency of the GPU, which is huge. And if you scroll to the next chart, you can see not the side effect of that is that it's about half power consumption. It's actually less than half. No, uh, essentially yeah. half. I mean, and that's whole we'll, system. we'll call it half. It, because but, uh, keep in mind, that's whole system power, right? And so the CPU sure, is sure. not really being affected in yeah. this. It's just really the GPU. So um, a huge drop in your power consumption, which is what lowers yeah. your temperatures, which, which allows you to get away with quieter fans. Which, it's all interestingly just enough, this only works when on AC power. NVIDIA does have a complementary technology called Battery Boost that does a very similar thing to increase battery life. So you'd probably it, it, see benefits from that. It's probably literally doing the exact same thing. It just has a different purpose. Like yeah. The purpose here is to lower your noise level. The purpose with battery boost is to extend your on-battery gaming yeah. capability. It's, it's, it's a bit confusing not really why there are two different options for that. You figure they could come up with one overarching technology that you just set a target yeah. frame rate you want, yeah. and it could be on all the time. So that's... it's The implementation in GFE is kind of weird. Like, yeah... 
you have to turn it on and yeah, you turn it on in, in GFE here. Yeah, and you can optimize settings for whisper mode in GFE for your games. But if you want to change the frame rate target, you have to go into the NV control panel, and it's a per app basis. So you right. have to go into the application and change the whisper mode target. It's just kind of janky now for something that requires you to install and log into register for GFE. Uh, yeah. I just like it like it to be all in one place if that's the case. Right. I agree. I also think um, the size of the audience that wants this feature is probably pretty limited, right? You're basically taking a high-performance gaming laptop mm -hmm. and saying, turn all that down <laughs> for me. Right yeah. now, they give some interesting use cases, which are which are totally feasible. Like uh, you're in a dorm room, or you're sharing a bedroom, or something like that. You know, you're you're in the couch, and your girlfriend, or your wife, or your buddies are like, "Hey, shut that damn fan up!" You're wearing headphones because you don't care because you're playing game. They're sitting there trying to watch TV or something. Let me get rid of that. Uh, and it's affecting somebody else more than it is you, right? Yeah. Um, so, I still don't know if I'd be able to, I, I'd want to sacrifice my frame rate for that other person. Yeah, I think, It would depend on the situation. Correct. How much do you really yeah. like that individual? <laughs> and and it, again, if you look at it more, the GS63 VR does not have a G-Sync display, but the RG Zephyrus does. So 40 frames per second on a G-Sync display is much better than That's true. 40 frames per second on a not G-Sync display and deciding yeah. if you want V-Sync on or yeah. V-Sync off. You have a lot of tearing or stuttering if you I, go for each I, of those I'm with options. You. Like, I, think it, I think it's cool for NVIDIA to offer this option. I don't think it's going to be like a widely adopted thing on some kind of universal basis. Because again, if you're buying a laptop with a GTX 1070 in it and then you want a game... You want to get like the best performance you can get yeah, out of it. I mean, That's you're why you're spending two thousand plus twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, when you're spending two thousand yeah. twenty five hundred bucks on a gaming laptop, you're not going to like. It's like buying a ten eighty and setting your frame rate limiter at forty. Right? Why yeah. would Maybe you do that? You're not going to do that all the time, but you know. But I mean, why would you ever do it? It'd be quieter. Yeah, but like you bought a GTX 1080 Ti. I mean, or I mean, I, it, it's just ga gaming desktops are way more quiet than gaming notebooks because of the given be. thermal constraints. They can be. So, yeah. yeah. I mean. Either way, it's pretty cool tech. I, I, you know, and like I said, it's free. It's it's if you have a GTX 1060 or higher uh, gaming notebook of any type, you can install this and run it and give it a shot and see what you want to do. It and like, you might there might be that one scenario one day where you go, yeah, okay, yeah, like, or I, even you I, I need can, this you right can, now. Yeah, you like, can go in and change cool. your game to 60. Yeah. You can go in and change your game's minimum to 60, right? And then you're going to get much less benefit of noise or uh, clock and power consumption drops probably. Yeah. Uh, but you'll get something. And maybe if it's on a 60 hertz display, it's it's okay that way maybe, yeah. right? So there, there's some stuff you can configure and play around with. And I think the selection of 40 is, I mean, it's better than picking 45 for a static refresh display, <laughs> right? But not a whole lot better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So does the there was no adjustment to the fan control done when it was turned on and off, was there? Manually by us? Yeah, it was all at the default, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the one laptop didn't budge, you know, in reality. I mean, it went down three dB, but who cares about that? But the the other one, the Max Q, mm -hmm. dropped significantly. Yeah. So could this, have been different fan curves. Different fan curves. So there's yeah. no actual in the whisper mode. It doesn't actually adjust any of that stuff besides the clock rate and the frame rate, right? Um, it doesn't even adjust the clock rate. It just it's it's a frame rate limiter. So mm -hmm. whatever the GPU knows that at thirty percent load, it can clock down yeah. using uh, GPU boost. So which is what it would do anyway. Yeah. Like if you had VSync enabled or something like that, right? Yeah. It would it would be doing the same type of thing, and and frame rate target control is something AMD's had and Nvidia's offered. I, actually, I don't know if Nvidia's ever offered it in their driver. I think like uh, Precision X offers it's, it. I it's think it's been hidden in the Nvidia driver for a while. If okay. you use like Nvidia Inspector, you can actually enable the frame rate limiter, but it's no. never really been on the AMD driver. Accessible. They do a good job of. Yeah. presenting it up and making yeah. it a, a first-class feature. And some people have made parallels to Radeon Chill, which isn't exactly the same thing because that's using idle time in games. Right, to clock that's dynamic. The GPU. It, it's it's, it's yeah. this idea, except it's more dynamic, right? When you're stationary in the game or it senses that there's less motion, it will downclock, lower lower average power, temps, noise, yeah. all that stuff. But it's, if the, the idea is if you're in fast motion, it ramps it all back up. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, 
it's a, it's just a different, it's a balance of, of the two states. So that's whisper mode. It's pretty interesting. Like I said, if, if you have a machine, I don't think I would go buy a machine because, Absolutely oh my God, whisper not. mode is a thing that they came no, out with. But if you already have one, you're going to buy one. It's worth, it's worth, it's worth checking on. Uh, new patron information here. We have an edited pledge from $12.47 to $14.92 from Coil Wine, who was, who was a new guy last week. So appreciate he's, that. He's a Columbus fan. Oh, Blue Jackets. No. Ohio State. Good Lord. History. The what? Now? What we, happened in 1492? I, I don't I don't recognize Columbus as a as a as a I'm not a, saying he's heroic. As a what? I'm saying it happened. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Was the ocean really that blue though? It was blue. Oh yeah. My is the ocean blue. So previously he had twelve forty seven. What was the reference there? Nothing? Battle mm-hmm. of Hastings? <laughs> no. Uh, well, no. Uh, we have a new pledge of $3 from Christian. Mm, there's like umlauts on this one. Non- nonken? How would you say that? N-O-N-K-E-N. But there's like a... a double dot O. Double dot with a line under it, though. Nonken? Oh, no. Not, it's a Christian nonken. <laughs> oh, no. Nonken. <laughs> I'm going to say that. I don't know. But thank you very he, much, Christian. We he's greatly appreciate that. with his that. dollars on who he doesn't want to see on the podcast. That's right. Non-king. Uh, and then, um, uh, okay, it's the 1492 also immediately got updated to 1599 from, uh, uh, how would you pronounce this one, Alan? Uh, I see, I, I understand that last name, but uh, C. G. P. Ryan? C... <laughs> I don't know what the S E M A J E. What's he trying to get across there? Samaji? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Try again next time. What did you but say the amount was? Much. What did you say the amount was? Fifteen ninety nine. Mm. What's that a reference to? Ninety nine. Come on, Josh, history buff. Fifteen ninety nine. Oh, Is that okay. the price Thank of the you. new iPhone? Close. Yeah, probably. Close. All right, let's talk uh, real quick. Sebastian posted a review of the HyperX Alloy. FPS and FPS Pro mechanical gaming keyboards. Uh, they look like this. There is the the 10 key version, the 10 keyless version. Um, they are, as Sebastian writes here, compact designs. Uh, they are solid steel frame for stability. Ultra portable design with detachable cable, which I actually have become a fan of. Cherry MX mechanical keys. Um, USB charge port allows you to charge other devices. Game mode, 100% anti-ghosting, full in-key rollover. HyperX red backlit keys. Additional colored textured keycaps spotlight the most important keys. HyperX has been getting into a lot of other accessory products recently. Yeah. They've done very well in the headset space. That's uh, Yeah. The, that cloud headset is like one of the top sellers on Newegg and Amazon constantly, hmm. which I don't necessarily understand, but that's fine. They're fairly inexpensive, right? Uh, no, they're up there. Oh, are they? Yeah. Okay. All right. And I know that when you, you did a testing on one of them, it was, I think it was an older version, but you would love the audio quality was good except for the microphone. Except for right? the microphone. Right? Yeah, the so mic is fix that. kind yeah. of trash. But I was going to try to replace my other podcast headset with that at the time. And yeah, that mic did not work it out mic did not, It no, was no, horrible. No, no, sir. Uh, they come with little carrying cases. You can see the detachable cable. They've got the extra uh, uh, textured keys there as well at least on the pro one you get those accessories the standard one you do not um similar designs here pretty much otherwise across the board they're using micro usb is that no mini that's mini, that's mini usb that's wow. pretty they common find those cables? on these keyboards is it i'm not entirely sure why the logitechs but... use micro yeah well that's because i mean in case you had a blackberry at some point and you got a bunch of spare cables <laughs> lying around <laughs> like like the the Products from people who aren't accessory manufacturers like Logitech tend to be mini. I hmm. think because they're maybe easier they're to work bigger, with. They're bigger, a little bit more robust. Well, I mean, the the micro is actually rated more robust than the mini. Yeah. Hmm. I don't believe it, considering how many my kids have gone through. <laughs> Your kids Fair. are not a good thing for testing. They just destroy everything. That sounds great for well, testing. Yeah, it's it's great for testing in general. But it doesn't matter yeah. what the rating is; they will just destroy yeah. it. Like you know, uh, the 104 key alloy FPS is 99 bucks, um, 
And what he was not expecting was the price of the new Alloy FPS Pro, which is $79, a very good value for a mechanical keyboard with Cherry MX brand switches. Um, so, so is the Pro the 10 keyless? Uh, yes. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. So I had that backwards yeah, up yeah, here. Yeah, because it's for the first-person shooter players. Yeah, I guess the, the pro for gamers want don't need the 10 key. They want lighter. The pro is the thing with the less keys. That I, doesn't make any sense. You know, for, for an aluminum-backed Cherry MX mechanical keyboard, 80 bucks and 100 bucks is a wonderful price point, I think. It is compared to a lot of things we've seen recently. That's very true. So the Alloy FPS got a gold award. The uh, Alloy FPS Pro got an editor's choice from Sebastian. So check out that review if you are interested in, as uh, we pointed out here, a fairly moderately priced mechanical gaming keyboard, if you will. Uh, and also, real quickly, we'll touch on this Seasonic Focus Plus Platinum Power Supply. So this is a 550-watt power supply. Um, but it's going to have a higher price tag than you've probably seen from many other 550-watt units because it is a platinum-rated unit. Uh, it is $99 for the 550-watt unit. So that's, I think, I think the problem for Seasonic with this is going to be when you get into the 550 unit range, you're looking at usually somebody who's kind of like a budget builder as opposed to somebody who is a you know, quality conscious guy first that just realizes he doesn't need a lot of power, I guess. Yeah. Um, so 99 bucks might be a little bit of stretch for some of that. And the comments on the review indicate as much. Um, but it is a small form fact. It's not a SFX design, but it is a short, uh, uh, how would you say this? It is a non-deep, it is a shallow power supply. There you go. It There's, is petite. Yes, thank you. Uh, 550 watt continuous, 80 plus platinum. Uh, it's only five and a half inches deep, um, fully modular, DC to DC voltage convertible, single single 12 volt output. Um, and I know Ken likes to see the insides of these guys. And so these caps are going to look even bigger because of the package is so small. The small package. Exactly. That's the exactly, exactly what I want with base. small hands. Yeah. I, I really swear. We, the shit. <laughs> See, look at look at how minimal that. They, I mean, they they cut everything down at yeah, the base. The caps are small too. And Those caps aren't big enough, so they me. make it look bigger. Sorry, Ken. Sorry, sorry, Seasonic disappointed you in that way. Let you down. Still looks clean though, like it was waxed. <laughs> Performance anxiety. Um, so those caps don't uh, subdue your ripple, Ken. No. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, standard assortment of modular cables, combination of sleeved and flat ribbon style, 120 millimeter cooling fan, fluid dynamic bearing, all that good stuff. Strengths, uh, you can see there, 80 plus platinum, small footprint, excellent voltage regulation, excellent AC ripple, noise suppression, quiet fan, uh, fully modular, 10-year warranty, substantial there. Uh, the only weakness is the uh, 550 watt model was currently hard to find in stock. That might have changed since he actually, between the time he wrote it and when we published it. So another editor's choice award from Lee there. A lot of good power supplies coming out recently. You know, so. I, th I think it's it's kind of fascinating that, um, and we've commented a little bit on this before, but, uh, you know, we, we were heading towards, you need at least a 750 watt power supply to have a gaming machine. If you have an 850 and 950, you're you're better off because maybe last longer and and provide uh, you know better current for for you know the dips and peaks of right. And now we're happily heading back the other way. I mean, when when I first started, a high end power supply was 300 watts. I mean that was, and then Antec started coming out with 450 watt. You know, with the first LED, you know, the blue lighting. In there, and those oh, were the high sparkle. end. And then PC power and cooling had a 550 <laughs> watt, and those were you know, two hundred, three hundred dollar power oh, supplies. Gotcha. That the, yeah. the, and the nice PC and power quiet and too. Yeah, like the PC, or PC, pa PC power and cooling silencer <laughs> that cost you like three three hundred and fifty bucks, and I mean, it was it was yeah. solid. It was very. Like, Can somebody ever today. make a power supply with a fan under yeah. like forty five dB? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this is it's it's great that we are going back down the other way. I know the I environmentalist in Ken is rejoicing. I'm wearing a green shirt for a reason. Because he's a yes, damn you hippie. Are. You know what you know what, Alex, looking at that camera shot, go back. You should have cleaned up the boxes. Too much What's in the box? What's in the box? Well, I don't know, because all those boxes are empty. 
Uh, it's just been a lot of in a lot of incoming product here. Man, we're well, busy. Viewers decided the Ark of the Covenants in there. Ah, okay, all right. Yeah, it is. It does kind of look like that. We should create that stack over here somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of incoming, not a lot of outgoing. This is very true. <laughs> story very of our true. lives. All right, let's get to some news for the week. And I'm going to start out with this story here about my buddy Raja. Uh, however, let's flip to the shot real fast here. I want to see. Hold on, I'm going to see this. That's what I see on my screen uh, on this page, like the cutoff of his of his golden fox hair across the top. Oh, it just stood out to me there. He's playing peekaboo. Uh, yeah, yeah. And there, oop, hello. <laughs> eh? Eh? Hello, there. hello. Would you like some bourbon? Hello. Yeah. Anyway, I have uh, some hot tamales. Sorry, we're having a little too much fun with this story. It's kind of a di it's kind of a downer story. Um. Raja Kadori. Especially when they, 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 they've gotten rid of the sabbatical program, so it's actually a leave of absence. So, um, that's not true. That's not true? No, I saw that, I saw that tweet, too, uh, if you're talking about the one from Pat. Um, when he came back the first time, the sabbatical program did exist, so anybody that had time built up, they still got it. Like, it's just, like, not for... You couldn't add anything else to it, which maybe explains why it's you know, a rather short one of about two months or less. Anyway, what we're talking about here is that uh, Raja Kadori, who was the senior vice president, chief architect, guy in charge over at the Radeon Technologies Group portion of AMD, is going on a sabbatical. Force reported by our buddies at Fudzilla, also posted over at Tweaktown. Um, and I, this was something, I guess, was this last night? Yeah, last night I got on the phone with some people from AMD and said, what the hell's going on? Um, and essentially that's it. Um, he, he, his, the letter that he sent out to the team we have here, um, that was sent to me. And he basically says, uh, that he had not family issues, but that all of the time he spent trying to get, uh, Vega ready and, and all these other projects, he quote, where's the quote? He had to cash in a lot of, uh, family points, Brownie points? Yeah, essentially. And so now he's paying some of it back. Um, you know, he does mention towards the middle here, as we enter 2018, I will be shifting my focus more toward architecting and realizing this vision and rebalancing my operational responsibilities. To me, you know, as much as this is about him, you know, using out family credits and trying to rebuild them and all that type of stuff, which I, as a guy who travels a lot and has a two-year-old, I totally get it. Um the, the line of shifting my focus more towards architecting and realizing it and rebalancing my operational responsibilities says to me that what he really wants is to not have to deal with all the management bullshit uh -huh. of probably where he was at. So uh, I have no inside knowledge in this regard, but it would seem unlikely he comes back into the same position and role that he was there before. Right. I know a lot of people, a lot of the tweets to me, a lot of the other news stories I saw were just like, oh, he was fired. And this is how they this is how they make firing people, you know, yeah, more amicable to the public is you put them on sabbatical and then they just don't come back. Which does happen. It, which absolutely happens. Right. Um, my good friend Francois Dentel went on sabbatical for like it seemed like 180 months and then he just didn't come back to Intel. Right. So uh, I, I can't that was say his choice. I believe so. Yes, yeah. I think that was his choice. Yes, and and I can't say for sure that that's not what's happening with Raja, or that he wasn't told to take a sabbatical because of other stuff. I don't know any of that. I don't think that's the case. Um, but it's still kind of bad timing. It it has an odd feeling to it. Uh, you know, like I said, pretty much all of the reaction I saw on the internet was either "Oh my God, this is horrible news," or they were just they were. Uh, glad to see him go which is a stupid mentality to have like oh their their mindset was oh this guy screwed up vega he screwed up amd and radeon i'm glad he's gone yeah that's a screwed up mentality that's, that's a that's an idiotic approach to take to things um that's just it's just simply not it's not the case uh well, i know we were talking earlier it's like no, no matter you know no matter who it is or when they take it taking a sabbatical never happens at a good time I mean, you're you're walking away from responsibilities at your work for months at a time. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and, and it's even it would it's probably be far far worse if he took a sabbatical before the Vega fifty 
six and 64 launch. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. That yeah. would have been a bit ominous. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been yes. really bad. I'm going to take a break. By the way, in That's two weeks, we're going to be releasing have some fun. Bronx. I'm out. Good luck, uh, boys. <laughs> now, that being said, I will say that like Jim Keller left AMD before Zen productized, but, and, and that gave me the idea that, oh my god, this is going to be a bad product. Turned out to be a really good yeah. product. But he left a substantial amount before the release of Zen. Correct, correct. Mm-hmm. I guess, I guess what I'm saying is, you're right, there's never a good time to do it. I think it's even, there's even less good times to do it when you're the guy in charge, right? If random PR person, marketing guy, engineer, uh, you know, one of a team of 20 uh, takes a sabbatical for a couple of months, there's a lot of people that kind of can contribute and make up for that spot. Here, like Lisa Sue is the one who's taking over. Right? Yep. The CEO of the company is one and is, is going to come over and take over the responsibilities in this meantime. So... Uh, I, I guess the, the the conclusion here is that I don't think this is a really bad thing. Like I don't think this is an extremely negative. Like I don't think he's going to be fired. I don't think he's going to quit necessarily. Like a lot of other people are are seeming to indicate. But I will also admit that like it just feels weird, right? It just feels a little off, right? Um, like. Uh, Raja, I don't want you to go. You know, that's I, like it's. There's still plenty of questions about Vega. There's still plenty of questions so, about so product. Raja, and availability. if you're listening, come on down. We got hot sauce. We got. That's bourbon. true. If Raja's if Raja's paying attention, we we've got, got cigars. We've got bourbon. Uh, you can come out here. You can come. I'll kick Alan off the show for the next two and a half months. You can come fill in for him. You can have a hey, new. The weather's guest still nice. Yeah, weather's weather's still pretty good. It rained today, but that was the hurricane remnants, and now it's going to be nice again. So. There you go. Come on down. Indeed. That's, a, that's our, that's our Raj news. Uh, Javag in the chat says, I hope he's not sick. He, I, I will conf- confirm to you that like he is not sick. His f- immediate family is not sick. Like There's no you know, life-threatening thing involved in this. It is not like uh, any of that type of stuff. So that's good news. Um, but it, it, it's, it's clearly a combination of, of things. So... I guess yeah, we'll just said, see oh, what you're going on sabbatical happened. and Raja's taking your place. Here, here's what you pay attention okay, to. So here he was. On, he was on, in a cushy job at Apple. Go ahead. Pretty cushy. Doing stuff there. Rolling around. Gets asked to come back to AMD. Offered probably some money and, and just the ability to shape things to come and got thrown into a boiling bucket of water. Well, I, I mean, it, when you're in that, when you're taking that position, you're not. You're not thrown into it. You are jumping into it, right? Like, you know what you're getting into before you take oh, that yeah. job, right? Uh, but that, but I also don't think you're wrong. I, now I forgot what my important comment was going to be. <laughs> you, wah, went, wah. you went and interrupted me, and now... I sure did. Uh, mm, it was going to be really good, too. Oh, no, it was wasn't. the best one ever. Oh, the, what, what, what I think we want to pay attention to from this point forward is, do any other people leave the company? You know, do any okay, that comment sucks. Other people take sabbaticals, right? If uh, if we suddenly, hey, your find your iPhone thing works. Yeah, I, yeah. He got an wrong, Apple Watch. He's button. really excited. He's playing with all the buttons. I'm trying to mute it actually. Yeah. Um. So like, if if a couple of other high level guys leave or go on sabbatical, then it becomes more questionable, right? Uh, in terms of the reasoning and and result of what will happen with Raja here. So. Anyway, keep that in mind. Let's go into some potentially more positive graphics industry news. Uh, This picture leaked out today that shows apparently a GTX 1070 Ti. It looks like it from Streaks? Asus. Yeah, a what like, now? this is this is a very clear leak location. There's an Asus logo, a G Skill, an Inwin uh, logo. So I don't think they're taking a picture at. An event, I guess, or something. I don't know. They're running a 7700K with a Z270 motherboard, uh, 32 gigs of RAM, and uh, looks like an Intel 750 SSD PCS. 750, yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. The interesting part here is obviously the GTX 1070 Ti. Jeremy, what else? Did we? Were there any other parts of this rumor that were interesting, or is this the only little tidbit? Uh, well, I mean, we know from the the Strix model that it, it's definitely eight gigs. Although we True. don't know if it's a GDR5 or GDR5X. Uh, although there's a good bet it's probably going to be 5x. Uh, the low latency and the uh, high CUDA core count, uh, which was what uh, 
hiding from me for some reason. 2304. You got it backwards. It's probably going to be just GDDR5, not 5X. Yeah. So low latency, a lot of cores. Miners are going to love this thing. I hope we see it in stores someday. Wait, wait, wait. As opposed to just sold out. You just said two contradictory statements. (laughs) Miners are going to love it. Miners are going to love it, and we're going to see it in stores? No. Sorry. No, I hope we see it. I mean, after Volta launches, we might see it in stores. Uh, Yeah. Uh, well, well, if Bitcoin continues its downward plunge, this is good for us, because when it does arrive, we'll actually be able to get it. In theory, in theory. I, so, I in mean, theory. clearly, if this product is real, its intent is to um, fix the problem of the Vega 56 being faster than the GTX 1070 at the same price point. Yeah. Right. So this is somewhere in between a 1070 and 1080. And the truth is, there's not a whole lot of gap between a 1070 and a 1080 in terms of gaming performance no, today? No, or price. That's true. Uh, or like, price. No, it's only $100. Price. Right. You got 100 bucks, assuming no sales or uh, other changes in pricing. Most if, of the time, it's 50, 60 bucks. If I'm guessing what happens with this product, it would be that the 1070 becomes 349 the 1070 Ti becomes 399 and the 1080 stays at 499 Okay. See, that would make sense. That, that's what I would imagine would happen. And maybe even you see the 1070 Ti phase out or something like that, but may, probably not, right? They're, no, I mean, they're, they're selling everything they make. What did I say? You said 1070 Ti phase out. So 1070 normal. So like, this is the brand new out. one. Yeah. You don't want to phase it out. You yet. launch it, then phase it out. Yeah, exactly. It's or the launch. Osborne effect. Maybe someone somewhere just no. got creative messing with their BIOS uh, strings in the, on the GPU when they were modding it. Or yeah, something. because this is according to an orange a guy in an orange suit or an orange shirt on the internet. Yeah. Wait, what? What do you mean they got clever that. and modded their BIOS? It was from an ASUS sign, not a screenshot. That's a sign. Like that's a physical sign. I I think that's a sign. Yeah, because yeah. you can see like the acrylic. Yeah, oh, okay. thing that's like there. a that's like a tabletop sign you have at a trade yeah, show. Yeah, he's right. So somebody somebody just typoed a, a freaking maybe that, seven. That's a hell of a typo on something. Yeah, well, um, I mean, yeah. seven to eight, it's not. It'll get a whole bunch of people to your booth. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you, it's not a typo. Okay, just look. I just I just had this feeling. That's not a typo, and it, you know, and and this would be like. This would be the right response for NVIDIA to make. They're kind of like, eh, whatever. We've got such good yields and such good coverage on stuff. We can just do this, and it's not going to affect us very much, but so, it's going to screw over NVIDIA AMD because their one shining spot was the 56 over the 1070. So what would be in there as far as, like... What do you mean? Would it be the fa- the lower latency memory? Would it, it would be-, be GDDR5 still. Okay. Yeah, I, so, I would assume so. So here, here's the interesting thing. We've already seen a 1070 with more stream processors than the desktop 1070. The we mobile have? 1070 has one more yeah. cluster uh, of stream processors. Sure. Well, the mobile 1070 is a weird duck. It's a lower clock. Right. But is it, it 2304 or is it uh, different? It's 2304, I think. Okay, that's that's the rumor. Is yeah. Wait, no, 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 no. Sorry. It's, it's only one more unit more than a 1070. Oh, so instead of 2048, it's 2092. Isn't it? 1920? It, it's 1920. No, 1920 is the, is the base. So it's uh, normal. 20, 2048. 2048. Okay. Yeah, 2048. Okay, interesting. All right. Well, there you go. Potential for another. Just what I needed is more graphics cards to review. Hey. Huzzah. And then not find in retail. So there's that. Uh, we won't talk about this a whole lot because we did a two-hour live stream talking about it, but Apple did have their event yesterday. They announced the iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus, iPhone 10, not pronounced iPhone X, iPhone 10. Um, from our standpoint, we don't need to go into a whole lot of the nitty-gritty here. There's updated... Uh, Newer, faster, better, bigger. <laughs> well, not really bigger. <laughs> well, yeah. Not really bigger. It's just faster, right? They announced the uh, a- Apple A11 Bionic processor which oh, wait, is sorry, a stupid sorry. name deeper deeper mm. pixels hey can, can you do me a favor and move the mouse on that system and <laughs> I make can sure remember the, the pixels are so when when, when you're answering a phone call and you start lifting it up to your ear it just goes na 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 somebody else showed to this minute it was going to cost six million dollars i think it just rebooted ken so yeah never mind um so the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus look I look identical to the 7, 7 Plus. They have the upgraded the processors. They have a, that's right. They have a glass back instead of metal black, metal back. Now they can support Qi wireless charging. Um, 
if we look at the six cores iphone 10 yeah the yeah more cores honestly i still look at that and i think it looks fake yeah. Right. Like the bezels Just are the so small. Doing that it is looks so weird fake. Yeah. That, yeah. Now, to be fair, like the notes have Note Eight and the Galaxy S Eight have done similar things. Well, they have the a gap at the top and the gap at the gap at the bottom. Sure. Still. To make it square, yeah. which I yeah. think is probably a smarter option, maybe. But yes, yeah. but you will absolutely know what is an iPhone and what isn't an iPhone. Oh, correct. They had that with the home button. And they have that again. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Uh, impressive looking device. Yeah, the, the A11 is now a six core processor. The A10 was a four core processor. Uh, this is four small cores or what everybody calls now high efficiency cores mm -hmm. and two big cores or high performance cores. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of interesting that that's the balance they went with. <laughs> Uh, we have seen other six core, four plus two designs in the Android world before, and I'm pretty sure they went four high performance. Four big and too little. And too little. I think. I'm not positive, but I, I think so. Um, I think you're right. Do, do we know if this it is the standard? It makes more sense. Go. Oh, I was going to say, is this the standard ARM big little thing, or is this the new no, dynamic? No, no. Or is this their own thing? Ooh, Apple, does totally their their own. Own. Okay. Apple does their okay. own. Apple does their own. So the last Apple's generation. Apple's got an architectural license. They don't. Uh, yeah. They don't, they don't license uh, designs and cores from anybody. Correct. Ah, okay. So in 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 the well, except imagination. Well, not anymore. Well, <laughs> for, not for new parts at least. Yeah. The uh, the A10 did two plus two, but um, it was known that you could only address any two at any one point. Right. Like like an, a, a, a process could only exist in one of those two kind of nodes, if you would. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, they were explicit in some of the dev docs that you can address all six at the same time if you wanted to. So you can make a serious uh, So that app. does kind of make it a little bit more ARM dynamic-like, right, Josh? Because that's one of the features of the dynamic designs. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's their own GPU now for the first time, right? This is not an imagination design GPU. This is an in-house custom built GPU architecture. I think they said it was three cores, but nobody knows what the hell that means yet. Um, because the imagination <laughs> when they uh, use the A10 was six based cores. Bird render, yep. like everything else in the mobile, in the mobile world. Yeah. Uh, but, but keep in mind, like the previous imagination was a six core GPU and this is only a three core GPU, mm -hmm. but that you can't equate those two things yeah. and the performance is already. I think well, the only performance metrics I've seen so far have been Geekbench on the processor. I haven't seen any GPU metrics. I haven't seen any GPU tests yet. I mean, they're calling it a three core GPU so that when they announce a four or five core GPU in the iPad part, it sure they can differentiate it. Well, I mean, it'd be like you know. Yeah, but the bad thing is, is they only support bilinear filtering and textures of this, and so it's it's you know. I'm kidding. Come on. I was like, what in the hell are you talking about? <laughs> it's a joke. That's that's a 1996 technology that they had to go back to because <sighs> it's their first GPU and they have no licenses. Uh, so there is a lot of question about yeah, how, how do they, how do they intellectual do this? property. How like, did they do this and not infringe on anything right. from anybody? Maybe they have some secret deal with uh, AMD or NVIDIA or... Uh, even Intel has those licenses as well to, to develop GPUs. So the, uh, look, AMD, uh, Apple's a very big, very wealthy, very intelligent company. I have no doubt that either they're prepared to forever lawsuits are going to come or they figured that out beforehand. <laughs> Whoever right? says us, buy the company. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, imagination. Oh, that's so cute. Here's $12. You, we now Here's own your $12. <laughs> right. Hold on. Let me, of course, let me the check best my would, would be if, if this GPU only supported quadratics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Bring it back quads. Uh, bringing back NV1. Uh, it has an Apple designed image sensor processor, so its own ISP. It integrates something called a neural engine, which I, at first, when I heard it, was like, oh, this is just BS. But then they said it was actually a dual core implementation uh, specific for like machine learning algorithms uh, capable of 600 billion operations per second. I don't know what that equates to. Ken asked during the live stream if this was essentially like a tensor core or something like that. I don't have any idea. Its primary function is uh, part of the facial recognition system on the iPhone 10, yeah. right? Just kind of accelerating that. Um, anything else on the on the like silicon side stood out? You know, they updated the they they actually I was actually surprised they uh, if you go to the tech specs or the the not even the tech specs like the feature page of the phone towards the bottom still they list um, high efficiency 
like workload distribution as one of the features, right? Basically saying like we've designed um, the arc, the CPU architecture in a way to distribute workload across all of the cores and coprocessors in an intelligent manner, more efficiently than they had done in the past. It's just, it's I mean, just, it's, the it's good. And I, mean, I assume have, they would do that, four but it's interesting to see now. Apple point something like that out. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, because normally they are very much a, we made it all better, faster. Don't ask us why. We ain't telling I mean, you shit. They talked about that a little last year with the A10 Fusion and specifically calling it the Fusion part. That was their 2 plus 2 part. Like they yeah. they talked about having low power cores yeah. and high power cores and the, different the, tasks the, running on different stuff. The bionic of this is, I guess. The neural net. The neural engine in the face recognition part, I guess. Right. I think it's stupid. But Even whatever. though the neural engine is in the other phone too. It's but, in it. I, we assume. I assume it is. Yeah, it's I mean, you saw it in there, but it's like, listed. it's not being yeah. used for anything today, yeah. right? So, you know, whatever. Um, so it's an impressive looking device. Um, the 8 and 8S, I'm sorry, the 8 and the 8 Plus go on sale on the 22nd, pre-order on Friday, and, but the 10 is not on sale till November the 3rd. Next week after, right, I think, is the pre-order? No, no. What are you talking about? For which one? The, for the 10. The 10 pre-order is not until the end of October. Like October oh, really? 27th, and then it ships on November 3rd. I think that's right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So you've got more, a month and a half before uh, pre-orders even open up. Open uh, up a month and a half of not having the cool iPhone. I know. It really iPhone. sucks. Mm. Uh, mm. I, I think I'm going to use that month and a half to use a Galaxy Note 8 for yeah. that month and a half and see if that they works. can if they can bring me back. I think that's good. I think that's good timing. So any other thoughts on the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, iPhone X 10? Animated poop. Oh, yeah. And emojis. Wow. You know, Ken was right. I poo-pooed all of this during the stream, and I still think it's idiotic. But, like, the Snapchat stuff and the and emojis, like, my... I mean, Snapchat already tries to do that. It just doesn't yes, have it does the hardware. Poorly. It does it. I mean, yeah. it does it. I think it does it impressively it's, well. It's impressively well across a for, wide array of For hardware. the hardware yeah. that it does it on. Yeah. yeah. Um, but this will do it so much better yeah, and they yeah, demoed probably. two of those snapchat things and like we were joking before the stream started of like the one where like the wrestler face paint yeah. but it looked really good like it's it legitimately it did. did look really good now I, if, if they make filter specific to that technology you're gonna have the status symbol wealth divide of your snapchat you'll lenses. know which one of your snapchat friends have the good phone yeah. based on which which one and has a thousand dollar phone which right one does not. Yeah. and so and you, that's how you they'll won't sell date it. them no, right? <laughs> it, it, it's like if I'm sending a sending a text message and it shows up as a green bubble, which means it's SMS instead of iMessage. I go, oh, oh. Well, no, for no good the, reason. But yeah, what, what was the app that cost like five thousand dollars and did nothing? That was the. I am uh, rich. It was. The, I am rich. <laughs> yeah, it, it, put a, it put a red like a red ruby or something on the screen. Or yeah, something. it was like red. Yeah, it was yeah. Just a little ruby. Yeah, just so you can open it up and it show you this. Ruby on your screen. That's true. Uh, Ericon points out that the new Pixel might be out before the iPhone 10 as well. So we'll see if... Uh, they're supposed to announce it next month, I believe. I don't know Are if they'll they? ship it. Yeah, worth looking into. Uh, all right, let's ask Josh about this guy here. Samsung announces 11 nanometer LPP and 7 nanometer LPP processors. What is interesting to us here? Is he muted? Um, no, he's not. Uh, that's a handsome man. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Is no. that the most important part of this news? <clears throat> Much. Uh, no. You know, uh, it, process technology moves on, and uh, Samsung is is doing that now. We know that they're coming out with their 10 nanometer process, which is a brand new process, but 14 nanometers still uh, cost a lot of money to develop. And it's been out only a couple of years. I think it's two years, two and a half years since the first product was actually shipped on 14 nanometer. Yep. And uh, it probably has not exactly paid for itself yet, much less provided capital to do the next generation of stuff that they're researching. And so it's kind of interesting to see in the industry that you know, for a long time, Intel did the the um, you know they 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 had their their process. They set it in stone. They used that one for a couple of years, and then they had an entirely new process. Then AMD kind of came along. It's like, well, we we can't really compete about that with that. You know, our our new process usually doesn't compete well with what Intel has kind of in their set in stone. So what we do is 
we start implementing improvements. And step by step by step, we start getting our, our products a little bit faster, more efficient. So at the end of the, the process cycle, it's running pretty well and almost to the next point of the next generation. And then, you know, they, they put out the next generation. It's a small bump. People get, you know, people got kind of cranky because they didn't see the jumps that like Intel had at the, uh, you know, 180 to 130 nanometer range. And AMD did things, you know, obviously different there. But this, you know, step by step has been a lot more common in the industry than we probably even see or admit. I mean, we're mm. surrounded by marketing terms all the time, but we know that like TSMC started doing the the half node process changes and it was really successful for them. And so now we're seeing Samsung kind of doing the same thing with their new 11 nanometer process, which is based on 14 nanometer, nanometer but it's approximately 10% more dense and about 15% faster when you're using these same kind of power requirements. Hmm. So uh, they've, you know, if, if you've got a 95 watt part, well, it's not going to scale exactly if I look that in, in, in big ASICs, but when you're just looking at, at, you know, switching speeds of transistors or blocks of transistors, you know, for the same power, you're going to get 15% faster switching. And so this is, this is a positive thing for yes, Samsung sir. and its partners, but you kind of have to look at this and say, well, you've got 10 nanometer coming out in 2018. So big guys like AMD, who utilizes global foundries for their 14 nanometer, which is a licensed Samsung 14 nanometer process, it is highly unlikely that they will go ahead and redesign their, you know, Zen Core architecture or or Vega to utilize this kind of half-step uh, process. But guys like, uh, what, Xiaomi, um, who, are, who are some of the other, you know, Chinese chip Huawei. makers? Huawei. Rock, rock chip. Uh, they can look at this and say, hey, you know what? We don't have to make this next big 10 nanometer jump. You know, we, we've got a, a product cycle. And, I mean, these guys are, are pretty aggressive in, in their products and, and, and their cycles. Well, well, and so they would be the ones who would utilize for a mid-range or a new high-end product using 11 nanometer process. Because, you know, it's 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 not exactly Lego blocks, but it damn near is the way that Huawei and, and these guys have, have done it. Um, they can spit out new chips relatively quickly i mean like seven to eight months for pretty basic designs and and that's that's impressive so they can actually utilize this this 11 nanometer which again it's it's a derivative of 14 nanometer but it's just better overall hey, hey Josh, better density it didn't uh, amd already confirm they're skipping 10 and going straight to seven for zen 2 not that i that's really cloudy Okay. Uh, I think that Ooh, they're... Magic 8-Ball? Okay, here, okay, here's the problem with 7 nanometer. They're basing that indeed. on Global Foundry's 7 nanometer announcement. And so far, we have not seen anything real positive out of Global Foundries and their own home-built 7 nanometer process, which is different from, as I will get to, Samsung's. Mm -hmm. So, and again, we're, we're dealing with... Some marketing speak is is Global Foundry seven nanometer really seven nanometer is it closer to ten nanometer? We know that Intel's fourteen nanometer is a lot closer to like Samsung uh, Samsung's ten nanometer in in terms of density and some performance characteristics. Well, at least they're they're fourteen plus or fourteen plus plus. I can't remember which one Intel's on. I mean, it's all it's annoying, but. You know, 11 nanometer gives a little half jump for those willing to go in. Now, the big news from Samsung is they also announced a new 7 nanometer process. Now, this is their first process that will be using an EUV litho source. It's a, you know, 250 watt unit. Uh, they've already put something, I think, 200,000 wafers through it since 2014. Hmm. Uh, they've now got... Some, what, 256 megabit SRAMs coming through with a yield of about 80%, which is 
pretty good, but SRAMs are about the most basic thing that yeah. you can put through there that are going to work. I mean, it's That's just what you test with. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 all regularly ordered. It's not complex logic. And so it's it's a good way to start out a, a new process technology is with these SRAMs. Now, a um, couple of things to think about. 11 nanometer, they kind of announced now. So people can start fabricating stuff to 11 nanometer if they have designed for it. And in about four months, we may be seeing products actually come out the backside. Um, the 10 nanometer is is definitely a 2018 product. And I would expect some of the first stuff to come out in spring, early summer. But, um, you know, another thing that we, we kind of skipped and I skipped and I talked about in the article was 8 nanometer is the last non-EUV product from Samsung. And so they will be in announcing, well, delivering those in a 2019 frame. So we're not going to see EUV in 7 nanometer until at least 2020. And hmm. that's some finger crossing in there as well because, you know, we can look at Intel who has more money than any other fabrication group out there and they shovel a lot of it into it because that's kind of, I mean, you know, they have a lot of people doing design, but they also leverage their manufacturing better than pretty much anybody else. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see who actually gets to what node first and how the physical properties of those nodes actually turn out to be. Um, again, I like I said earlier, a lot of it is marketing. Uh, you know, TSMC called their product, you know, a 16 nanometer FinFET. Well, in actuality, it really was about a, a 20 nanometer type product that had FinFETs added to it. That's mm. a real general way of saying it, but they called it 16 nanometer FinFET. And now they're going to do 12 nanometer FinFET, which is more akin to kind of a 14 nanometer Samsung. And so Samsung releases an 11 nanometer. It's, you know, marketing, sure. but sure, uh, sure, sure. it's billions and billions of dollars of research in each of these process technologies. And it's amazing anything even works because it's pure freaking magic. <laughs> I don't I don't disagree with that. Very cool. Uh, I just saw a news story come around on, on Twitter that I mentioned real quick. Where there's a report that Apple is going to put $3 billion into the deal to acquire Toshiba's storage business as well. Also, so apparently this is not completed. We were debating this earlier if the Western Digital to Toshiba deal mm -hmm. well, had finished. They, they announced it is clearly not. In talks. Yeah, they, clearly not because now this is the Bain Capital deal. That also includes uh, Dell, Seagate, SK Hynix. Well, the Bain Capital deal includes WD. No, incorrect. Uh, the KKR bid includes Western Digital, uh, as well as Foxconn. So nobody's accepted a deal. Correct. What you're Correct. But apparently, according to this report, Apple actually has uh, is included in all three bids to buy Toshiba. Huh. But this, their $3 billion offer in the Bain one is the biggest portion of that. So just kind of some interesting side notes. Uh, Intel releases the Dawson Canyon Nooks that have a 15 watt Cabby Lake processor in them. I it's, never liked that show. Yeah, Dawson's Creek. Yeah, I get it. Dawson's Canyon. This is the follow up, actually, or the prequel. This is when they were all babies. Um, uh, actually, speaking of which, this is the follow up to last year's Baby Canyon Nook kits uh, that they launched last year. So uh, this is Dawson Canyon powered by 15 watt Cabby Lake. Um, despite sounding more dramatic than Baby Canyon, um, the new Nooks are lower powered and ditch iris graphics and USB 3.1 Type-C. Specifically, Intel is launching six new models that will each come in three flavors, bare bones board, slim case, and a taller kit with room for the two and a half inch drive. Each type of Nook kit will come with either a Core i3 or Core i5 part, um, but they do support Intel RST and Optane memory. So that's kind of interesting. Why are these not eighth gen parts? Yeah, so as Ken pointed out earlier, these are Core i3-7100, Core i5-7300, so they are dual-core hyper-threaded parts, um, whereas in theory, you would think they would 
want to use 8th gen parts that are, you know, quad core. At least the Core i5 would be quad core. I don't know if the Core i3 might be quad core non hyper threaded. They uh, have not Core i3 8th gen they parts. They have not actually yeah. announced them. So that might be part of it. Yeah. But, uh, and I mean, clearly these have just been in development for a while. Sure. So you got to release them, right? It so. does make me feel excited about if the possibility of a 8th gen Nook <laughs> yeah. with, with a quad core 15 watt CPU. Yeah. In. If the performance eventually, is, if the performance is good, that would be a nice home theater PC. Yeah, I, I'm a little you'd actually be able to start to do a lot of things that yeah. you've been limited on before. Uh, internal I/O includes two DDR4 SODAMs, two M.2 oh. slots, one full length, and one 30 millimeter slot for Wi-Fi adapters, um, uh, such as the included Intel 8265, which is included in the kits with cases, but not the bare boards. Uh, one SATA port. Uh, in headers for serial USB 3 and USB 2.0. External connections are four USB 3.0, one gigabit Ethernet, two HDMI outputs, um, and that's it. So uh, I, I'm a little disappointed in the idea that, that that there's some regression here in terms of USB 3.1 or whatever. But maybe they're saving those features for a quad core derivative uh, in the not too distant future. I don't really have any idea about that. Um, They'll be these will be available by the end of the year in Q4. Pricing yet to be released. Um, yeah. So and also apparently, simply Nook, which I guess is a is it just a partner of Intel's, will be offering Nooks with custom fanless cases. Um, so that would be actually pretty neat, right? If you can get rid of that tiny tiny active cooling in those devices, I think that'd be that'd be a plus. So I know I know we have, uh, uh, I guess I won't mention it by name, a friend of the show who works on the Nook team, so I'd be curious if he has any input on why they didn't go with quad-core or if there would be a quick turnaround for quad-core um, and how the, the Dawson Canyon kind of fits into, into that, that ecosystem. So interesting stuff there. And uh, a couple of quick ones. Asus wanted to get in on the phone action. To be fair, they did announce us the day before the iPhone launch. Mm -hmm. The Zenfone 4 Max smartphone uh, only has an MSRP of $199, which makes it $800 less expensive five. than the iPhone 10. $199. <laughs> Isn't it incredible? Ki it kind Thank of, you. Kind of is. It's 5.5 inch Thank display. You. 720p. 720p screen. Um, dual it's camera sensor. $200. Yeah, I know. It's only 200 bucks. I get it. It's 720p. It's fine. 5.5 uh, uh, inch 720p screen is getting to the point where... Mm, I mean, it's the iPhone's... The standard iPhone is how big? 4. Point what? 4.7? And it's 720, right? Yeah. I don't I don't know. Yeah, it is. Because the, 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 the plus is 1080, head. right? 7 Post plus? Yeah, I think 1080, so. And the 7 is 720. Yeah. Uh, so it's got a, a, a dual sensor camera. Um... You know, one wide, one narrow. Uh, it uses a Snapdragon 430 processor. It's an eight-core design. Adreno 505 graphics. Um, a dual image signal processors that complement the dual camera setup. Uh, it does have an enormous 5,000 yes. milliamp hour battery. This is awesome. 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So it could probably last for seven years. Not it's accurate. More statement. fuel for the fire. Um, and they actually have this cool feature where you can use it as a battery pack. You can take power from it to a device if you will need to, like headphones or something like that. Or your USB mouse died and you need to charge it a little bit or something like that. You can actually charge from your smartphone to the other device. Screw that. I won't charge my laptop. <laughs> uh, I don't think you could do that. But I mean, and they have like a setting in there so you can say, hey, don't. Char don't draw more than X. Like, don't let me go below thirty percent or fifty percent or whatever it is from don't that kill my I could battery. I could see the charging Bluetooth headphones. Yeah, that I could see. Bluetooth headphones. You know, your your AirPods die, which you don't have because you have one of these phones. But whatever, well, your head your Bose headphones die. Like, oh, okay, I don't have a battery pack with me. Plug them in for ten minutes, and you know, you're kind of boomed, ready to go. Uh, that's that's kind of an interesting idea, especially when you got a five thousand milliamp hour battery. That's like. What's the next highest you've seen? Like 3,200, 3,300 milliamp hour or something like that? Like, that's that's pretty big. It's pretty big. And it's again, it's $199. It's available on Amazon. Uh, only a 32 gig capacity. Um, three gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of local storage. But uh, I'm sure it has, uh, I guess I'm not micro positive. SD. I assume it does. Yeah, it does. Dual SIM and micro SD. Um 
up to 256 gigs. So this is this is like the antithesis of the iPhone 10. Yeah. Right. Or the or any of the iPhones. Well, it's the higher the caterum or 200 bucks. It's what? It's a caterum. The it's a seat and wheels. What this did is, you say? It, what was the word you used for caterham? Caterham. Lotus Seven. I, I I get your reference. Yeah. Right. I get it. It's basically a battery pack and a screen. Yeah. And a little tiny PCB. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. all you need. I think for the vast majority of people, you are correct. True. You are correct. So, uh, and then finally, we'll end with this. Intel goes, why giggy for VR, Jeremy? What does that mean? We're talking about wireless VR? Huh? Huh? Well, you know, kind of, unless you're HTC. Because uh, oh. HTC kind of did go with why gig for their latest uh, demonstration model. And apparently, Intel ain't going to be selling why gig anymore. Oh, They're wait. cutting it off uh, as of the end of this month, and by the end of the year, you're just not going to be able to get the hardware anymore because, strangely, a, uh, I mean, admittedly, very flexible protocol, but it sort of combined the worst things in Bluetooth and the worst things in Wi-Fi together in something that was barely adopted by anybody. Oh, so what are, gonna, docks. what are they going to do in its place? Uh, they're just going to sort of take all that money and focus on their new VR headset. Uh, so Intel is not the only YGIG vendor. In fact, they're not the no. largest one. That's Qualcomm. Also Qual- true. But like they, Qualcomm and is the YGIG. Like, they're the ones that will be pushing it still. Mm. Yeah, it was an alliance. There, there were multiple people involved in it, but yeah. Intel was one of the people that was putting it in. And yeah. They're not going to be producing anything that's uh, compatible with it anymore. Because, I mean, hey, it, it wasn't be effective beyond 30 feet in the best of circumstances. Most of the time, any sort of uh, thing that blocked line of sight and boom, you've lost your connection, which is wonderful when you're doing a business pre- presentation. Mm. And it also had, uh, it added some of the uh, latency that you get from it's Wi-Fi. disappointing. And, I mean, we've got Thunderbolt 3 now, which does everything except the wirelessly, but it does it beautifully. Uh, it, it's much more robust. And, frankly, the whole, oh, my laptop can connect wirelessly to the projector is kind of cool, but not so much when it dies in your presentation. So don't expect to see YGIG uh, built into the chips from Intel anymore. But, uh, on the other hand, do expect to see maybe a little bit more of the uh, VR products. Hmm. Specifically baked in. Hmm. I don't approve of Only this Only you change. would drink beer from a mason jar. Such a Only hipster. you. <laughs> it's a Lagunitis branded mason jar. Lagun- I you might just, add. God. Lagunitas. Lagunitas. <laughs> Canadians. <sighs> All right, let's get into our hardware software picks of the week. I'm going to take mine out of the That's box. That's your pick of the week? Heck yeah, it is. Plastic. It's got such a nice color scheme. This guy here, the trackball is back, suckers. Trackball oh, you never got it, left. Did you? Oh yeah. Can well. you can you pop the, <laughs> the ball out? You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's. It doesn't even have a pattern on it anymore. Heck yeah, this Remember is they used to have the this pattern. This is the on future. Them? So this yeah, is the, the grid. this is the Logitech MX Ergo. It is a trackball. I think it's the first one that Logitech, uh, new, the first new one Logitech, Logitech has made since 2009, I think. Did uh-huh. that be decided? Uh, 11, I think. 11. Um, How easy is it to clean the ball? So easy. You just lick it. The ball's not I the mean, hard part. It's, it's get, the undercarriage. Yeah, you have to get the ball out. I got to turn it on. Hold on. So that you can. Yeah, you got to have a lot of reach to get down there. And it helps if you have water jets <laughs> at that angle. <laughs> Listen. Wait, wait, water it's jets or bidets? What are we we're talking, talking about, here? about So here I am, I'm using this trackball. Now, what's cool about this is, uh, so it has this capability, so you can you can hold it like this, and then it has this oh, surface yeah. that pops out that basically it's lets you run it. Ramp. It'll, it'll tilt. Different angle, so whatever, whatever you think is most, is most comfortable. So uh, how much is this? Um, $199. It's not listed, so it must be free. <laughs> uh, Logitech will love to hear that. Uh, I think it's I'm sure they would. 
what is it? I think it's ninety nine. Ninety nine bucks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so so trackballs are an interesting thing that re- most people probably don't even know what they are anymore. Like new, you young whippersnappers. Yeah. Ken, did you ever use a trackball? Like really? No. Did you ever handle a ball, Ken? So it's a mouse, kind of, but instead of putting the ball the older, on the bottom, the older ones had bigger the balls. balls up here, and you you move it and you twiddle I, I it with your hand. I usually do well. Kensington. Track the, ball. the older and ones had bigger balls. Office. You still have those, yep. or you do, or you did? Yeah, they're size the baseball, the track ball on that. Yeah, thing. No. yeah. 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 yeah you can get it with a red ball. You can get it with a blue ball. <laughs> This one's, gray, this, one's gray, this one's a gray ball. Yeah, that one's a gray uh, ball. And so you know, use cases. I, who who is optimal? What is an optimal use case? Playing for Marvel Madness. <laughs> no. That's fair. So I, I have a friend who uses one. He has a because he he does a lot of CAD for like he he's in CAD all day for work and he has a 3D mouse on his desk at work because work paid for it. Mm-hmm. However, at home he has a trackball. So if he needs to go around drawings, he has a trackball. He didn't. Spend another 150 bucks on 3D mouse for home, so that's an interesting application at least. Sure. The sort of 3D applications, a trackball is still a unique solution for. Well, and, and we were talking earlier, you know, for for people who use a mouse all the time, sometimes you need a break, and a trackball is a good break. Yeah. Oh, so I'm going to put this on my desk next to my G900 and kind of like go back and forth because you can have. This is a serious question though. How do you clean under the ball? Um, there should be a joke. collar you take twist out. the rim. <laughs> no, there's no... And pop it out. There's you, no rim. Yeah, wait, I like, thought you were supposed to underneath. look around the rim to get it out. If you no, you lift the ball. No, there's something under it. there. Only oh, after a shower. Oh, okay. I don't know. Because it doesn't look like you can... I'll ask. That's a legitimate question. Because yeah. you're going to get crap under there and, you know... Dr. Ujesh. Your ball's going to get fuzzy. Mm. You're going to want to... Somebody lost it. Of course, you know, this is the perfect... The perfect uh, controller, it's as wireless, by the X-Men way, too. said. Go ahead, for Josh. those who are doing a, a are there, missile command. Are there double A's in there? What is oh, that? Yeah. It's not big USB enough for missile charge. command. Just, oh, just USB. Eh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it just charges by uh, micro USB at the front. Probably lasts longer than like an pro- MX-900. Oh, it, oh, clearly I does. know a very strange man that used to play uh, Soldier of Fortune 2 with one of those. And somehow did very well. Hmm. Yeah. Strange. So there you go. That's the Logitech MX Ergo. I will report back with more updates uh, as we go. Before we get to the next pick, I do. I had this. I have another, another Patreon contribution. I have to label out a new patron uh, from. You uh, sound so disappointed, Ryan. I have to say it out loud. I, the name is MSI Sucks with an X. I don't really believe that. I don't think that's that's an unfair hey, it's, statement. It's the all new. Hey, that's Trent. right. MSI sucks. <laughs> Poor Alex. I miss Alex. Uh, so that's a $10 pledge, though. So thank you very much, MSI sucks, I guess. Uh, even though I don't believe MSI really sucks, MSI sucks pledge $10. So I had to say his name. That's just, that's just the rules of the game. Well played. Well played guy who probably works for Gigabyte or Asus. Wait a minute. DFI. Wait, wait, minute. Maybe he just hates Microsoft installers. Oh, I could. That could be it. That could be it. Could be it. Uh, all right, who's up next? Jeremy. I think that's you. Ah, so I, pro- I mentioned this back in February on a news post. Uh, I don't think that I brought it up on the podcast, so but it's worth mentioning again because it's now shipping. Uh, Machina is an M.2 interface for your car. This is a, a little board which will allow you to gain access to all of the software running in your engine and tweak it to whatever you want it to do. Uh, they had a very successful Kickstarter. Uh, they are shipped the Kickstarter, but now they're shipping anyone who wants to order it. So if you don't have the uh, microcontroller that they built it off of handy sitting around, you can grab uh, the, it's, it's about 90 bucks for the full one. It's either plugs in under the hood or under your dash and gives you full control of your car. Just like you used to have to when mm. Before it was all digitized. Is, yeah, you is, might, this, hmm? is this compatible with VWs? Uh, it's it's it really good be. at changing your emissions for testings. <laughs> you said you said <laughs> it's you said M.2, isn't this just O B D two? Like it, 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 yeah, it, it M two is the they name. They call of it the M two. It's yeah, it's oh, the oh, oh. proprietary port. Uh, I uh, just, you might even be able to car. get more battery life out of your uh, Tesla, Ryan. Oh, no, you won't. I did see a very similar one of these that the Kickstarter just launched for us, kind of following the project. It's called AutoPie. It's autopie.io. Yep. 
It's a very similar thing. Yeah. This is I, 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 before, like open source being able to access the data from your car. Like it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, so you email, this one will let you tweak it uh, Elon too. Musk, Brian, to uh <laughs> increase your battery performance. Hey, I'm I'm in the hurricane. It rained here for two days. <laughs> I need my battery <laughs> rained. Locked. Actually, I think well, I have the max size yeah, battery. You have the max size for your pack. No, you're right. I could, have paid, I could have paid for the 90. Yeah, and I, well, do I don't know if that's a software upgrade or a hardware upgrade. It's software upgrade. What do you have? But can you I still do it? You have 85. Oh. Yeah, I, I think so, because there was the option for me to do it after delivery. So, ah. yeah. But it was like five grand or something stupid like that. So, no, thank you. I'll push yeah. the car. So, there's a huge community <laughs> behind it. Uh, they do, you can buy a book uh, for your specific car <laughs> to be able to access it. But there's also a huge community that's just playing around with it because they finally got access back to their cars again. Hmm. Mm. I that's already, cool. I already have all that stuff to do this. So, so is but this maybe. just a is this just a CAN bus mm -hmm. drop, yeah. or is this actually a piggyback? No, it's, no, it's, it's CAN bus. It's, it's just plugging, CAN bus it's plugging into the OBD yeah. port. Plugs in directly to that. Uh, what is it? OBD two. So, OBD two. Yeah. So, it, so it gets access to the CAN bus. So, so it doesn't do any of the encrypted prom flashing or anything like that. It's just a. No, you'd have to. You'd have to. You'd have to write that. But. Mm. It's not Somebody just, probably it just, already has. It's not just a monitor. I believe you can write some values over OBD2. Yeah, you can. Without yeah. touching no, the encrypted you can proprietary write. stuff. Yeah. Right, right. You can reconfigure some modules and some cars and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And... Okay. All right, before we get to our uh, next pick, we, do, we have another uh, pledge edit that came in. Uh, this is uh, a move from $3 to $5 from our new favorite... Uh, Ryan's shiny balls edited their <laughs> pledge from three dollars to five dollars. And I'm I, glad you've been waxing them. See how shiny, shiny. Them see so how shiny, shiny it is. Shiny ball. I'm showing, showing how shiny, shiny. You shiny know, ball. it shouldn't be that color. And if you jiggle it, there's something really wrong. I'm just waiting for his ball to fall out. <laughs> Plop on the table. Uh, <laughs> well, better than a torch. Let's not. Let's not. Uh, share, uh, Josh. Just oh, Josh is gonna make me say sad. my name. Say my name. But no one is around you. No, but we just lost Jerry for <laughs> He actually looked behind himself. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Jerry Cornell died to this week. He apparently no, went to Dragon he? Con last week. Uh, came back, wasn't feeling so good, and then died after taking a nap. Well, he he died during. Yeah. The nap mm. never woke up, mm. and so one of his greatest um, ventures out there. This book, if you have not read it, you really should. The Mountain God's Eyes. I have it, not it read it. Really is a a science oh, fiction brilliant. classic. So mm. it's not a huge amount of money, paperback or Kindle, and uh, yeah, it's it really is. Uh, uh, you'll read that, and and you'll see a lot of. I mean, if you if you read a lot of science fiction, you'll see a lot of the things that they wrote about in later stories, pretty much ad nauseum. I mean, it really it's a fantastic book. Get it? Yeah. And yeah. then you can buy the follow up too. Yeah. All right, I'll do that. That was called the. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to say the title of the follow-up. It's it's not appropriate. Uh, well, it depends on what you're gripping now, doesn't it? Or you forgot. Well, exactly. Yeah. All right, uh, Alan, what do you got for me? Uh, so since we can't find that dang um, cooler that Sebastian reviewed in black oh, yeah. anywhere, it's well, still like out of stock. You, anyway. just, you need that one specific, huh? Well, no, I just wanted a black, like, you know, quiet air cooler for CPU. And then I was like looking around and uh, these look pretty good. Uh, be quiet. They have a whole dang line. Look on, look like there's a whole row of different watt ratings. <laughs> yeah. On that listing. And almost all of them are black. Some of them are silver. 50 watts. I mean, it goes all, yeah, it goes up to like 250 watts. Look at that. Look at the heat pipes on that guy. Look at the fans. Uh, it's not That's... on a funny angle. I don't want it. Should look like a V8. Yeah, that was our discussion in Slack today. The V8 engine uh, looking yeah. coolers. They make some that are, you know, that's it sideways and like. Yeah, not bad. Anyway, so it just looked like a cool line and they seemed well reviewed. Um, you know, 
Cool. Might be worth taking a look at. Alex, you've got one for us? I do. I'm uh, two years behind the curve on this one. <laughs> okay. But uh, as you were mentioning in your mailbag this week, uh, I do like to give props to Linux Gaming when it's, when it's due. Yep, yep. Um, so I was looking through Steam, and I was like, oh, look, City Skylines. Yeah, this game sucks, Shan. Mm-hmm. If you ever played SimCity, any of them, this is what it should have been. I, I'm very impressed. I am very sucked into it, and my wife hates it already. <laughs> yeah, Paradox is really bad for that. They are. They are. They're they, really bad for that. I, I'm just, it's blown away. It's its a very, very in-depth city simulator, um, and everything works as you expect it to, and everything breaks as you expect it to. So it, it's just a, a really, really great game. Hmm. And it works on Linux, so yay. Hooray! Hooray! You've got your answer, guys on YouTube. I built my city on Linux cores. <laughs> I guess that kernels. Looks, uh, that looks pretty involved. It, it, it it's very involved. Oh, it's paradox. It's, it's paradox. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's lots I of DLCs. There's lots kill of add-ons. <laughs> <laughs> Designing traffic patterns. No, thank you. But you don't want to design the water infrastructure. That car I just drove right over the median to get the in the given, parking lot. The given watershed of an area. Not lifelike. I, I haven't done any water transport yet. I am strictly doing uh, mass transport. You haven't transport. had to do water transport nope. yet? What kind of game is that? You must have a bunch of thirsty right yeah, over there. Is it on That's easy not mode? Realistic. It, no, it, I'm, I'm just getting past like 25,000 people. It's it's No, I'm just starting out. Like I said. More water mains. <laughs> you, you, they, have, they have fairies. They have blimps. The, Who uses uh, blimps? Blimps. They're they're blimps. Fairies. Do they use nitrogen? Josh, you got to play this game. <laughs> Apparently. All right, guys, uh, that's going to be it for the show this week. Thank you for joining us. Those who did so live at PCPro.com slash live, you can find all the information uh, for our show, videos, audio downloads, uh, live sh- live stream links, show notes to all the stories we've talked about. All of that is at PCPro.com slash podcast. Please share uh, the podcast with anybody else that you think might be interested in our little community here. We would greatly appreciate it. Um, and uh, make sure you come join us in the live streams and hang out and BS with us. As we go. Yeah, because so. you got guys like uh, Cyclops in the chat giving out like keys for uh, Quake Champions right now. Oh, really? Yeah. There you go. See, you should be in the chat. PCPro.com slash live. Wednesdays, 10 p.m. 7, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific. Okay. That's it, everybody. We'll see you next week. I'm Ryan Strout. I'm Jeremy Elstrom. I'm Josh Walrus. Um... And I'm Alan Malentano. He always trails off with some... <laughs> Bye. <laughs>